story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Rodney and Betty Harrington dined out tonight for the first time since their marriage with Betty's parents. Betty? Everyone was tense and uncomfortable. The evening ended abruptly with Betty close to tears. What are you doing? I don't like this room. Fine, but what are you doing to it? I'm rearranging the furniture. At this hour? I want to. Okay, okay, so you had a run-in with your father. Does that mean you have to go in the furniture moving business? Would you please just let me alone? Hold it. Hold it. Okay. I'll do it. Where do you want it? Over there. The bed's over there. Well, move the bed. Move the bed. Do you have any idea what time it is? Okay. Come on. Knock it off. Knock it off. Well, if you're not going to help. Listen. Now, you argue with your father all you want to. But you just cut this out. Why do you care? Didn't you say it was late? It's bad for the kid. You'll manage. Well, I won't. You've done it before. That was before. Listen, women have miscarriages this way. Oh, please get out of my way. I'm talking to you. You don't have to worry about the baby. Oh, sure, you're made of steel. You're going to swim the Atlantic Ocean in your seventh month. Oh, Rod. Hey. You've got to take care of yourself. I, I can't let you do anything foolish. Why? Because it's my responsibility, that's why. Because, well, if anything should happen... Did you know in the middle of class, or sometimes driving home, or in the morning when I wake up before you, I think about the baby? Because it's your responsibility? Yes. Responsibility? Yes. Couldn't use another word. I said what I felt. You feel uh, responsible? Yes. Nothing more. What else you want moved, huh? How about this bureau? May maybe not the whole thing, maybe just a few drawers, right? Well, come on, we haven't got all night. I'm trying to tell you something. Yeah. And these pictures, these crummy pictures, you never liked them either, did you? Okay, go! Rod, listen to me. And that lamp. That lamp. What about this crummy lamp? Rod! Mr. Rodney, I knocked Mr. Rodney, but you didn't hear me. What is it? Your mother's been taken to the hospital. Mr. Harrington says it's just for tests, but I don't know. Thank you. You'd better go alone. I... I just upset everyone. I knocked Mr. Rodney. But you didn't hear me. Last white count? 21,000. Right. I want a glucose intravenously. Tell them an OR. I want both blood and plasma set up. She's AB. Yes, doctor. Is she going to surgery? Now, nurse, please. Has Dr. Morton arrived? He'll be another half hour at least. She can't wait that long. She's in shock. The abdomen's filling with fluid. What's the matter with her, doctor? I can confirm what I suspected before the test, Mr. Harrington. Your wife has a duodenal ulcer, and it's perforated. There's gross internal infection. I've ordered the surgery. I need your permission to operate. Dr. Morton will be here in half an hour. Have I your permission? You won't wait for Dr. Morton? 
It isn't a question of won't, Mr. Harrington. Then what is it? All you give me are a lot of words. I'm trying to give you my best professional opinion. If I don't go in now, right now, your wife will die, that much is certain. What are her chances, Doctor, if you do go ahead and operate? Well, there are always dangers in this type of operation, especially at this point. Then again, we don't know what we'll encounter. Do as Dr. Ozzie says. Mr. Harrington? All right, Doctor, do what you think's best. Mike. Mike, you're going against Dr. Morton's specific orders. I know that. Can't you get any support in it? I can. I've tried both Lipton and Burgess. They're not available. But what about the resident? He's assisting now in OR. He will be free for at least an hour. Mike. Good doctor. He gets out of line. Oh, who said the line, Les? I don't see why you're defending him. As a doctor. No, not as a doctor. I'll get him some coffee. I'll pull rank in the kitchen. Dan? Norman, your mother's going to have an operation. Right now? She's going to be all right. I'm thirsty, Dad. I'm thirsty. There's a phone over here. You're shaking. You're icy cold, son. Why does it take something like this? Why does it take something like this for us to quit being strangers? You were never a stranger to me, Norman. Never. All right, son, that's enough. That's enough, Norman. You'll make yourself sick. Come over here and sit down. Remember when you were very young, gluing some pieces of wood together? Mother said I'd be an architect one day. You know where those pieces are now? No. Your first letter from camp? No. Your first report card? You have them. They're the only things of you I could have. Why? I don't know. Don't say you don't know. Not this time. This time, talk to me. Tell me. At the time, it seemed right. You always seemed to belong to your mother. A letter? A report card? You never were a father to me. You were a junk collector. No, it wasn't junk, Norman. It was bits and pieces. Bits and pieces of you. right away to the Harrington house. Yes. Do you happen to know when the next bus for Boston stops at the square? Thank you. No, don't ring, Alma. I'll be waiting out in front.
Hello, Betty. Hello, Allison. I was just taking a walk. It's a suitcase. The one you had when you came back from White River. I'm not going to White River. You can't fit very much in one suitcase like that, can you? I won't need much. Are you sure? Are you worried? I should just leave you alone. Yes, you should. <coughs> Why are you leaving? Go away, Allison. Is it because of his mother? Why should it make any difference to you? Doesn't it to you? Yes. And I don't have to explain to you. No. No, I guess not. Only... Only what? Only I'm worried. About me? Yes. Does that sound foolish? No. I'm worried, too. I wish I knew where you were going. The bus goes to Boston. And after that... Betty? Will you write a story about me, Allison? I don't know the story. Well, make it up. Make up a good one. Make it about two girls. Two girls. One played the game to get the boy, and the other... What did you do, Allison? I... didn't play the game. You couldn't. I'm not so sure. My buses do. I better go. Don't go. I have to. Please don't. Why not? What does it mean to you? I don't know. I'll be all right. I'll be better off. How do you know? Because I know what it's like here. What it's going to be like if I stay. Now, why am I talking to you? I guess you need to talk to somebody. And you just happened along, taking your walk. Alison McKenzie taking her lonely walk. Yes, Alison McKenzie taking her lonely walk. Telling Betty Anderson, Betty Harrington, to stay in Peyton Place. Why? I, I don't want you to go. Why? Don't keep asking me why. You haven't got an answer. No, I don't have a nice, simple answer. All right, I'm sorry I tried to interfere. Do what you want to do. Goodbye, Allison. Goodbye. Yes, Dr. Rodney. Thank you. Go on with your review, Doctor. Patient premedicated prior to entering OR. Sodium pentothal administered through intravenous drip. Response? State of highly agitated shock persists. Any appreciable change since the administration of nitrous oxide? No. Cardioscope?
No change. Nurse? Ready, doctor. How about it? Ready when you are. Rossi said we couldn't wait. All right, never mind what Rossi said. I'll take over. Come with me while I scrub up. I'm going to find out what this is all about. Bobby said it was serious. Have you believed him? What else could I do? Indeed. But what are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? The patient is anesthetized. What anesthetic? I didn't ask. Well, ask. Oh, no, 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 finish here. Bob, is there anything I can do? Gave Rossi your consent? Yes. Well, then you've done enough. What are you doing? I told you my suspicions over the phone. Suspicions? Confirmed by test. Duodenal ulcer. Duodenal. Perforated duodenal. Nurse, gloves. Dr. Rossi, I'm taking over. If you just give me three minutes, Dr. Rossi, I'm ordering you to terminate your surgery. I brought this woman in here. I'll get her out. You may leave. No, sir, I can't. Very well, you will assist me. Doctor, I'm losing blood pressure. Doctor. The blood isn't oxygenating properly. How bad? Bad. Cardi scoop? Response seriously diminished. Cardiac arrest switched to pure oxygen. Would you take over the external massage, Doctor? Give me four milligrams of norofan. Give me a reading. Very weak. Nora said, Doctor. Better get me one to one thousand adrenaline, ten cc's. Doctor, I can't get any blood pressure at all. Keep trying. You may need more oxygen. I have a full tank, Doctor. Fair one, Doctor. Thank you. Be careful. Yes, sir. Why are you stopping? Why are you stopping? Don't stop. Don't stop. Dr. Rossi. No, wait. Dr. Rossi. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Just like that. How? Wasn't there anything you could do? 
I arrived too late. I should have made him wait. Go home now, Leslie. I should have made him wait. Yes, you should have. Go home, Leslie. Tell them all was on my mind. All right, Doctor, tell me. You willfully and deliberately countermanded my instructions. Why didn't you wait? I couldn't. She would have died. She has died. I told you. I told you. I told you. you don't operate. How many times do you want me to say it? She would have died. I'm telling you again, she has. I'll make out a report. You write a supplement? Oh, yes. I'll send it up for your signature. I'll read it, you know. Of course. It's going to contain that business about a perforated ulcer? Naturally. You claim that I overlooked a perforated ulcer. Doctor, I'm not making any claims. I'm simply stating that Catherine Harrington suffered from a perforating duodenal ulcer and that I'm going to finish, Doctor. Yes, you are. He suffered from a perforating duodenal ulcer. Now, I can understand how a doctor, when he becomes too close to his patient, can misconstrue the symptoms. But in this case, the facts are that the tests the were... The tests were inconclusive. Not to me. There you go. Doctor, it's my belief, it's my firm belief, that I did everything humanly possible to save the life of Catherine Harrington. Now, I did everything that I thought was feasible and necessary. That's your belief. All right. One of us is at fault here. Either you as the attending physician or me as the operating surgeon. The only way to determine the truth is to ask for an autopsy. I don't consider that necessary. All right, as the operating surgeon, I'm going to ask for one. And if you're interested in the truth, rather than supposition, you'll ask for one, too. All right, you'll have your autopsy. And I'm going to brand you for what you are, a willful egotist. I told you before you didn't belong here. Well, now, Doctor, I'm going to prove that. I intend to drive you out. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Mother, what happened? Now, go away. Just go away. Yeah. Well, let me see that. Don't touch me. You let my mother die. It's about the autopsy. When was it rescheduled? The autopsy was scheduled for 9.30 this morning, and that's when it was performed. I'm married now. I'm going to be a father, but nothing's changed. You know it, and I know it.